So you think to yourself, what the hell? I'll just eat some trash. Because we watched Season 6, Episode 6, The Gymnast. Hello, Katie. Hello. How did you like The Gymnast? It was alright. Ah, okay. Did you like it? There were some funny things that happened. I felt like there was some really good lines. There were some good lines. There was an iconic reference uh, that I now get. Which was? We'll get there. Okay. So, The Gymnast was written by Alec Berg and Jeff Schaefer. It was directed by Andy Ackerman. It aired on November 3rd, 1994. Vulture.com ranked it as the 19th best Seinfeld episode. Really? Screen Crush had it at a slightly more reasonable 44th. What did Vulture say about it? Uh, like, forget about the Jerry storyline. Mm. It's, all, it's all George. Yeah, okay. It's all George all the time, baby. But I think if you have to forget about a storyline, mm. it's not worthy of the top 20. So you have to forget about that storyline. It's just that the good storyline is the George storyline. I line. know, but good episodes, all the story should work. Mm. I think. You don't think the gymnast worked? I mean, she well, was ne- silver. Neither did Jerry. <gasps> Scandal. Do women do the pommel horse? No, they don't. Yeah. Shows what they know about gymnastics. Who are the guest stars? I was just about to say it's a you thing. It's never been a me thing. It's, it's not once. Th- it's a you thing like, let's throw it back to last week. It's a you thing like. Nope. That's later. Nope. 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 So we had Ian Abercrombie reprising his role as Justin Pitt. We also had uh, Lois Nettleton playing the role of Mrs. Onright. She was in In the Heat of the Night, Medical Center, uh, and she was also uh, Miss Chicago of 1948. Wow. We had Alina Lowenson, who played Katya, or Katia, mm-hmm. as they kept pronouncing it. She was in Simple Men, Schindler's List, and The Wisdom of Crocodiles. I was impressed for a moment. What is The Wisdom of Crocodiles? I don't know. It just huh. sounded funny. Uh, and then uh, she was in the tag from last week, but we had Jessica Hecht, or Hecht, mm. uh, who played the role of Lindsay. She is in, like, everything. Hmm. She was in Friends, Dan in Real Life, Whatever Works, Nurse Jackie, Succession, Breaking Bad. Wow. She's She's in everything. But she was in Friends. She was uh, Ross's ex-wife's girlfriend. Oh. Susan's ex-girlfriend? Susan's girlfriend. What was her name? Anyway. Jessica Hecht. Okay. Let's throw it back to last week when I asked you if you remembered this episode. Jerry dates a gymnast. He is very excited about this because gymnasts are quite flexible, and so the sex should be fantastic. I think I nailed it. I'll read the synopsis. I laughed when I wrote the synopsis down. Mm. Probably more than I laughed in the episode, but I think this is a good one for a change. Jerry dates a gymnast. Period. Mr. Pitt becomes obsessed with a 3D image. George eats quote-unquote trash and reveals an odd bathroom habit. And that's when I laughed. Kramer gets a kidney stone. I told you about the guy at my work that can't say the word concierge. (laughs) <laughs> no. What is he saying? Concierge. Concierge. But concierge, that's so funny. Why Why can't he say a je? I don't know. Hmm. How often do you say the word concierge? Uh, this This seems like, uh, like, how did this come up? We have a um, morning and evening meeting at the start and the end of the day, and one of the item line items in it is concierge. It's like concierge for our customers. Hmm. Why do you have two meetings every single day? In the morning, it is for the handover between the UK team and the Canadian team. Oh. And in the afternoon is the handover for the Canadian team to the Australian team. Couldn't it be an email? 
Most days, yes. Hmm. It used to be a half hour meeting. Yeah. And then we shortened it down to 10 minutes. And it usually lasts two to five minutes. Then it's not worth having. Hmm. I'll, uh, I'll let the powers that be know. It's, yeah. That, that's infuriating. There's also handover notes. Then why do you have to talk? I don't know. It's a waste of everyone's time. Anyway, uh, the stand-up starts with Jerry talking about novelty toilet seats. And I didn't know what he meant at first, but then he said, like, the clear ones with coins inside. I don't think I've seen one in person, but I know what he means. This is pretty niche. Yeah. Maybe Jerry's starting to make, like, a lot of money. He's starting to get, like, some <laughs> weird furniture in his house. So the toilet seat at my grandma's house, before they redid the bathroom in, like, the 2000s, it had a wooden toilet seat. Oh, yeah. Which was nice because it didn't get cold. Mm. But it was painted red. Mm. And then the lid was also red. And it had, like, a playing card imagery carved into it, Mm. like the king and queen of diamonds or something. It was very fancy. (laughs) They grow up in a casino? Jerry goes, uh, you know, it's bad enough Lincoln got shot in the head and now you're going to pull your pants down and sit on him? Did Jerry invent, like, teabagging like the kids do in Halo, where you, you like, kill a guy and then you run over and you crouch on him? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, no, obviously not. You've never seen this? No. You've never seen this phenomena? No. Hmm. I don't play. It's a way to, like, taunt RPGs. your opponent. So, when you die... Yeah. For like 10 seconds before you respawn, you can still like see out of your character's eyes. So you just see a butt. The person that would kill yeah. you would come over and like crouch and stand up and crouch and stand up. <laughs> but technically, they're not teabagging. They can't pull their pants down. We're teabagging Lincoln. That's what we're doing. So George's girlfriend has taken him back, I guess, after his breakfast at Tiffany's. Faux pas. Faux pas. And he goes, I think she finds my stupidity charming. Mm. He's better with the mothers than he is with the daughters. I originally wrote down, George wants a MILF, at which point he then said, if I could talk to the mothers and sleep with the daughters. Yeah. Uh, Is he saying women his age are not interesting to talk to? Hmm. Is he saying older women are easier to fool? Oh. Well, I mean, this, this woman takes him back several times after doing questionable things. Um, just before we talk about that, I would like to point out that Jerry had a box of banana nut crunch Mm -hmm. on his, uh, table. Yep. Recently we were uh, in the States and we went to a Walmart. We went down the cereal aisle, said to our daughter, pick out any weird cereal you want. They had, they had everything. They had Mm -hmm. like lemon flavored Cheerios and cookie crisp and. We have cookie crisp. The options in front of her were endless. Mm Mm-hmm. And she chose Honey Bunches of Oats. <laughs> and then you made her put it back and pick something stupider. I didn't. I said, we can get this in Canada. And she picked... Uh, oops, all berries. Captain Crunch, oops, all berries. <laughs> it's gonna, that's going to rip the skin off the roof of her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised in the cereal aisle about how many cereals in bags that they had. Mm. Because I think you can still get, like, puffed wheat or something in a bag. It's always on the bottom shelf. Mm-hmm. But you don't really see that here anymore. No. And this this was, like, a bunch of different... Bagged cereals. Like, big bulk bag, big bulk bags. I think the fundamental difference between Americans and Canadians are they bag their cereals and we bag our milk. Mm. We're a match made in heaven. I don't get why the 3D poster is at Mr. Pitt's office. Elaine was having other things framed oh, okay. for Mr. Pitt, and gotcha. so she had it done for Kramer. 3D art? Computers, Jerry. Man, this is such like a niche 1990s. Yeah. Uh, it existed for the, the two years, that 3D art. You're looking on our shelf for your 3D art book. Magic Eye and Magic Eye 2, they're right uh, there. What year were they published? I wanna, I'm want i going to say uh, between- 94 and 95, I'm going to guess. Uh, I was going to give it a wider one. I was going to say between 1992 and 1996. So Magic Eye, the first one, 1993. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm thinking about it, the show was airing in 94. So it had to have been before 1994. Yeah. Maybe early 1994. 
Magic Eye 2, probably also the same year. Oh, 94. There you go. Ooh, a rocket ship. Is it round? Is it pointy? I really liked Mr. Pitt in this episode. <laughs> Mr. Pitt's ridiculousness was kind of off the charts. Moland Springs. I like Moland Springs. I chose the name myself. Is his is this his office or his home? I think it's his office. Mm. So I didn't really understand the circumstances, but somehow Jerry has met the uh, silver medalist from the 1984 Olympics mm -hmm. in gymnastics. From Romania? From Romania. In the show, her name is Katya. And there is a silver medalist from the 1984 Olympics from the Romanian team named Ekaterina Sabo. Huh. She also won some golds. You would say the gold medalist then. Well, she also, she won silver. I think she won team gold. Mm. Oh. Yeah, in that case, maybe you'd say like she was the yeah. silver. Yeah. I think she won a few silvers in team gold. Mm. Fun fact. The 94 Olympics, Romania was the only Eastern Bloc company. You know, Romania was the only Eastern Bloc nation the USSR and the rest of them boycotted. And so they like, they cleaned up. Hmm. They were second in golds to the U.S. Wow. Yeah. When we were dating, that company was going to send me to Romania, right? Yeah. Yeah. That never happened. Nope. Hmm. Not forever. Forever. No, 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 no. Well, it, it hasn't happened. It, it, it will never happen. <laughs> no, no. But they weren't going to just send you permanently. No, they're just going to send me there for a while. Yeah. Map out their utilities. You have a Romania travel book. That's how close it got to. Yeah. yeah I was. I was like... We're going to send you there. My boss went. So why didn't they send you? I don't know. It was a up company. Oh. So other than knowing she's a gymnast, and Jerry, I'm sure his gymnastics knowledge is uh, limited. Mm -hmm. What would they talk about? He just he just wants her for this... Uh, it's her, not the, her her uh, yes the, gymnastic it, prowess. Their, con their conversation is limited because he wants something from her. One mm. thing from her. He doesn't want to get to know her as a person. True. I guess they go on a date before he sees the tape. Yeah, I was going to ask, is gymnastics a particularly sensual sport? That was my mouth, not my butt. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I think it's, it's like... Uh, like, a, oh, I'm dating a yoga instructor. It's like, oh, mm. she's going to be so flexible. Do what? And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like a contortionist. Uh, yeah. It's, and that helps. It's just weird. That helps you how, you know? know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love Elaine uh, grilling Jerry later on, like, do you think she was going to take some chalk and, uh... <laughs> I will say, I think if we take it to the extreme the other way, where there's, like, zero flexibility, that would not work. So you want, like... So more flexibility has got to be better, right? Is there, is there a, a bell curve? Like, once well, you get uh, there's, too there's, far, it's like... You, 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 I mean, sex with Gumby, I don't know how good that would be. But also like stacks with uh, a corpse. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't going there. I was not going there. <laughs> I was actually thinking of like. Uh, I was going to say like Barbie. Sex with Barbie probably wouldn't be very good. She has no. Her legs can't go this yeah, way. They exactly. only go this way. Yeah, that, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> I'm gonna cut all this out. <laughs> so some flexibility is good and somewhat needed, and a little bit more, but not too much. Is better? Yeah. Oh, okay. Can't it be? I think flexibility is like a sexy trait that a woman can do. Like, I guess I don't really understand it. Although, if I think about like a man doing the splits. Yeah, like a, a woman, she can be like, oh, I can put my, my leg behind my head. And you're like, that's a thing for sex. That could be used for sex. Couldn't it? It could. You're going to tell me it can't be used for sex. You're just going to give me all this rope so I can hang myself. <laughs> I'm putting my shirt back on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
is a thing. You take your shirt off in the bathroom? On occasion. Just for number two. Just for number two. And much like George said, like, I don't want to be encumbered. I don't understand. You're sitting on a toilet. Uh huh. Like, My arms never come into play. What do, you mean, what do you mean your arms never come into play? <laughs> you explain yourself because I'm never like, oh, darn this shirt binding me up. Mm-hmm. I can't finish. Like, what, <laughs> what are you talking about? So you, you so especially with a button-up shirt, uh-huh. right? It's long. It's longer so that you can tuck it in. Yeah. So like you're sitting on a toilet, you don't want it to like go into the toilet. You hoik it up. So you, wouldn't you prefer not to have to hoik it up? When I'm wearing a dress and I go to the bathroom, I don't take it off. Oh, yeah, I hoik I, it up. It's unfortunate that you aren't <laughs> wearing that. Garment. If you could take it off, would you? Wouldn't you rather poop naked? No, take it, take I, it from one extreme. Okay, <laughs> you're either pooping naked or you're pooping wearing every single item of clothing that you own. Which would you rather do? <laughs> I say there's a happy equilibrium between no. the two extremes where you hoik it up out of the way. You would prefer to hoik it up than to poop naked. Yeah, because then you would I would prefer have to put- more better than naked is is hoiking. Then I wouldn't have to put my clothes back on. I'd be out of there faster. It's not about putting your clothes back on. But you can still put your clothes back on after. It's the act of pooping we're talking about. Did you start taking your shirt off after this episode? Oh, yes, absolutely. Did you do it before? Um, I don't really remember. I would uh, definitely like. Uh, roll my sleeves up. You gotta roll up your sleeves. You gotta roll your sleeves. Yeah. And then I, George Costanza, genius George Costanza, is like, just take your shirt off. I'm lead bulb. Uh, this is better. I mean, I don't do it at work. I don't do it when I'm at well, public. Well, why not? You're encumbered at work? Aren't, and... the, aren't the stakes higher? <laughs> there, there's a line I'm not willing to cross about being a, a, a guy in a public toilet with my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to stand by that assertion. But there's a stall door and a hook. Uh huh. Shouldn't you take your shirt off every time you go? I'll take, like, if I'm wearing a hoodie, I'll take the hoodie off and just be in my t-shirt. Why? Because it's, in, it, it's, it, <laughs> it, it, it's, you're it's, taking, it's, you're it, taking it, half your clothes is, off. It is holding me back from my full potential. That's it. We're not talking about anything else in this episode. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. So you pull your hoodie off and your shirt goes halfway with it because they are always like stuck together. No, I'll pull and you're my, like, no, shirt, you go back I'll on. I'll take my hoodie off and put it on the hook and then I'll like hoik it up. <laughs> 23 minutes into the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> So George talks about how good he is with the mothers. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, is this kind of like a Chekhov's gun uh, situation where George like mentions that he's good uh, with the mothers. Therefore, in like the second yep. act, he has to be terrible with the mothers. Yep. God hates me. Mm. Well, he did choose to eat trash. <laughs> what the hell? I'll just eat some trash. So I do think that it was, it was a fairly... Uh, uncontaminated piece of food that he was eating. Mm-hmm. But I do agree that it was trash. Uh, I'm, I'm with Jerry. If it's trash adjacent, it's trash. Yeah. I just, I feel like in a, in a covered garbage can, yeah. the trash air is circulating in there. There's going to be a lot of trash air on that eclair. When uh, Kramer... Comes in talking about the Kama Sutra and Tantra and stuff. Jerry goes, mm-hmm. boy, you can really talk some trash. Better than eating it. Mm-hmm. They watch this tape of Katya. It's like three guys watching a porno. George is, George is agog. His mouth is wide open. Mm-hmm. They're just watching a balance beam performance. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. I don't get it. What What's turning them on? When When... 
the gymnasts like slam onto the beam with their crotches. They're, that's a move. I was thinking I was going to be the apparatus. <laughs> I agree with you. Like, I think it's, um, you know, like obviously like the, the gymnasts are very athletic and everything, but it's not a super sensual. Um, no, even the, the floor routines where the men can just flip, flip, flip mm-hmm. and they're done. But the women have to add in like arms and stupid. It's not, it's not like a. Like a scarf dance. It's like, I got to hit this pose and do, and then I'm ready. It's like very, mm. you know, it's it's a routine. And it's meant to like check off boxes. And You said check off? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> and like, I'm not taking anything away from gymnasts, but they are usually teenagers, yeah. muscular. I was going to bring that up. Like- so... <laughs> It's not like how many a, how many years it was the the eighty four Olympics so it was ten years later so was it like maybe she was sixteen and now it, she's like twenty six maybe uh, yeah gymnasts don't don't gym after female gymnasts don't do that for very long there was that female gymnast that like didn't she oh, yeah, compete she was 40 at forty or yeah. yeah okay the exception yeah she was full of a bunch of Russian drugs. <laughs> Maybe Katia was too. Katia. 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 I don't answer to that pronunciation. So of the three transgressions that George made, which do you think is the worst? So Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, no, no I wasn't even counting Breakfast okay. at Tiffany's. We there should. was, okay, so four transgressions. So Breakfast at Tiffany's, uh, Trash Eclair, Being a Bum. And uh, shirt off, shirt off at the party. Trash Claire. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give George a break. Like, bum is totally not his fault. Like, that's not a like that's a misunderstanding. Yeah, that really like there, there's so many despicable things that George does that I feel like this is kind of a he gets a pass on this one from me. Okay, why did he fling his coffee to the side? There's a trash can right beside him. I think he was trying to like dump it into the street. Yeah, why? Uh, Just put was, it in he the said trash. it was really bad coffee. There's a trash can right there. Well, don't you don't want to put a liquid into the trash? Who cares? You're not going to take it out. Oof. Somebody has to take it out. Don't you? Don't you have? Uh, Do you think for that the that coffee is the man? worst thing that they have to encounter? Mm. There was no bag in there either. I don't know how those wire trash cans get emptied. Mm. But he takes a very clean-looking newspaper out of there. So Katya and Jerry and Kramer go to the circus. Because that makes sense. Yeah. Her friend Misha is an acrobat. Uh, they're talking about the animals and stuff. And she says, my father, when they would bring out the elephants, he would yell at them. He blamed them for all the ills of society. Mm. Have you ever been to an animal circus? Yeah. I feel like I guess. I have a vague memory of yeah, going to one with my cousins. Me too. Well, not with your cousins, but I have a vague memory of going to one. <laughs> but I like I don't think it was Ringling Brothers or anything like that. Mm. But maybe it was just a people circus. I don't know. I feel like I've seen lions and jumping through hoops and stuff. It must have been the late nineties at the latest. Yeah. They still do that? I don't think didn't, so. Didn't Ringling Brothers uh, yeah. close? Yeah. Hmm. Thank goodness. For the for, for being bad to animals? Yeah. No. Oh. I think maybe they still, I mean, we can look this up, but I think they still have, like, the performers, the like people. Cirque du Soleil? Yeah. Ask. That's the more impressive thing, I think, anyway. Yeah. Like, a circus with animals was because you couldn't, like, see, there was no TV, and you couldn't see those animals yeah. on TV. <laughs> So they, like, ship them around the country. So you'd be like, ah, that's what a lion looks like. She says to Jerry, you may tell jokes, but you are no comedian. You may look like a clown. But you're not a clown. That was after uh, Kramer yelled so loud that he... uh, Misha fell down. Misha fell off the tightrope. I don't have any more notes from the episode, but I do have some notes about kidney stones. You don't want to talk about Hitler? Let's talk about Hitler. (laughs) (laughs) Why didn't... Elaine, tell him to wipe his face. She didn't want to get in trouble about having ink. But it's on her hands. He can see it. 
It's funny. I know. We'll annex Poland. <laughs> and our profits will go up. Yeah. So it's on tap for next week. No, I want to talk about kidney stones. Okay, sure, yeah. So the cr- the pain that Kramer is having, he's clutching his like lower mm. side. So the stone has moved into his ureter on that mm. side. Ureter? Ureter. Which causes it to spasm, the kidney swells, and it blocks urine. And that's what causes the pain. It's not actually like the stone. I don't, I don't think it's mostly the stone in there. It's the... The, the buildup? The buildup. Mm. And so the buildup of urine causes like cascading waves of pain mm. from like kidneys down. And I've heard that people have said that passing a kidney stone is as painful as childbirth. Mm. So there have been studies on this with men and women, including women who have both given birth and passed a kidney stone. Mm. They didn't say whether they had any drugs for childbirth. Right. However, women who've both had a kidney stone and given birth have rated the pain as somewhat equal. Mm. Men have assumed that kidney stone pain is not as painful as childbirth. Mm. I think they're being nice. <laughs> if I say it's worse than childbirth, my wife will leave me. Mm, true. But they're, I, I, when, I've, when I read this study, they're asking people who have given birth to think back on the pain of a previous mm-hmm. childbirth, whereas they're rating their kidney stone pain in the moment, or like in the moment, in the moment. Yeah. So I think time and also like the endorphins of you even have your baby may sort of skew the judgment. And even in the study, they're like, maybe we should interview people who've previously had kidney stones and, and are giving birth. birth. Yeah. And I would say they probably wouldn't want to talk to you at that moment. <laughs> That's true. I think somebody once told me that like, whether this is true or not, I don't know. But it's actually like helped me when I've been in painful situations is that the body doesn't have a capacity to remember pain. Mm. So you can remember like, oh, doing that was painful, but like you can't rem- you can't like remember and like feel that, right? Yeah, I think you can remember. You can remember that it was painful, but you can't remember the pain. If that makes sense. I guess. So, yeah, I agree that, like, in the moment, you would rank it higher, whatever it was. Not whatever it was, but I don't know. And maximum, they said it's, like, 8 out of 10. And I want to know, what is 10 out of 10? Mm. Is it some unimagined, you know, some some pain you don't know about yet? I think that's the most pain you can have. 10 out of 10? Maybe if your leg's off or something. I don't know. Also, kidney stones, they used to be... Assume that only like older men got them, mm. um, but uh, the incidence of stones is increasing in women, mm. and I wonder if that's an actual like effect that's happening in the world, or doctors are just listening to women in pain, right? It's like <laughs> previously undiagnosed. Like, yeah, you have uh, you have lady lady cramps. Go home. <laughs> it's like I don't know if you've seen the whole thing in the news about how uh, is it Mennonite kids are uh, there's like. There's no ADHD in Mennonite kids. There's no uh, SIDS. There's no uh, COVID. There's no autism. There's no any of these things. In, and it's like, oh, yeah, they also don't like allow you know, modern medicine doctors to come in and diagnose them with these yeah. things. So do you have any corrections from last week? I have corrections from the couch. So we wondered where Poppy was from. According to WikiSign, he's from Tuscany. Yeah. So he's Italian. Um, and the Italian communists were outlawed during the fascist regime regime. They continue to operate, blah, blah, blah. They were part of the Italian resistance movement, believed in democracy, repudiated the use of violence, and wanted to apply the constitution of Italy in all its parts. They sound pretty cool. Sounds okay. Yeah. Hmm. I think the Wikipedia article I read was written by communists. (laughs) Hmm. So, Breakfast at Tiffany's, the book ending is different than the movie. I don't actually remember the movie. So, when I was reading about this, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that happened. Mm. So, at the end of the movie, things are catching up with her and she decides to, like, take off. But then her friend, George Peppard, like, they, they reunite and she stays. Right. In the book, she does take off. Oh, 
But also, in the book, he is gay. Mm. In the movie, they did not say that because it wouldn't have. Yeah. The- 1961, they wouldn't have made a gay main character. But there are clues and references. But they end up together, but like like platonic friends. I don't know. Mm. It's kind of murky. That's it. What's on tap for next week? The soup. The soup? Not the soup Nazi. Mm. The soup. What's it about? It's an existential question from a new character. Mm. Does soup constitute a meal? Is it chunky? (laughs) It's it's something to consider. (laughs) Okay. I wonder if the characters will consider that very question. (laughs) Okay, well, bye. Bye bye. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?